Welcome back to Income Trading 101. Today is March the 14th, 2021. It's actually my second video for today, but I wanted to make a futures trading video. It's been a while since I've touched on futures and given some of the uh, recent developments in the U.S. economy, uh, especially with the money that's going to be uh, put in millions of Americans' accounts this week, uh, I figured what better time than to look at the main debt instrument of the U.S. government, and that's the Treasury bond. So we're going to apply. Uh, I'm going to stop. I won't make any no uh, additional comments or anything because any additional comments I make would uh, would, would sort of be in the in the realm of fundamental analysis. We're just going to talk technicals today and take a look at what's going on in the uh, U.S. Treasury bonds. We're looking at T-bond futures, uh, symbol Z, uh, B, ZB up here, uh, and I'm using the continuous front month uh, contract. Now, in, in reality, if you were to trade this, you would probably look at the April contract or the March, so there'd be an additional number, but I like looking, when I'm looking at the market in general, I want to look at the rolling continuous front month. Uh, so this contract we're looking at, you can't actually trade because when you go to trade, you have to use, you have to choose an expiration month. So that being said, let's go ahead and just take a look at this and do this analysis. All right. I'm going to get rid of volume. You can see the volume has been uh, relatively uh, stable. We haven't seen, we've seen a few spikes, but not too many significant drop-offs uh, you see down there in May. Um, but for the most part, it's been kind of average. Uh, so we're going to get rid of volume and go ahead and add our moving averages. Um, and I analyze, uh, I analyze futures just the same as I would stock or cryptocurrency or anything else. Um, the difference for me will come if I'm adding any fundamental analysis to it. But we don't do that on these videos. Um, that ends up being, um, you know, funny thing about fundamental analysis is that it can end up being um, rather uh, subjective at times too. Um, you get into political discussions, especially when it comes with something like the uh, the Treasury bond, which is U.S. U.S. debt. So here's what's happening: is you've got the price of these bonds right over here and as uh as the as it as the credit risk increases the price or the value of the debt instrument goes down right so with the announcement of another stimulus package and the execution you have a scenario where it's going to cost um more uh for the u.s government in terms of interest rate to borrow that money, right? Um, and as bond yields increase, the actual price goes down. So it's like if I were to make, if I were to loan you, uh, if I were to say, hey, um, can you give me some money today uh, and I'm going to pay you back next year, you might say, okay, well, um, I'll give you $95 today and you pay me back $100 next year. That's a 5% interest rate because, uh, because of the, that $5 that's being made on, or that it's going to cost uh, me to borrow $100. That same scenario happens with bonds. So the, value, the price of the bond is going down, which means inherently uh, the yield um, the interest rate is increasing. So it's getting more expensive to borrow the money. And uh, what's even better is it looks like we're sitting on some interesting, uh, some interesting uh, areas of resistance. So, um, all right, let's dive in. Uh, it's enough, enough chitter chatter. Um, when you look at what's happened, um, really since, so we've got the pandemic, that happened, right? Pandemic value of these bonds go up because um, because it's U.S. Treasury. It's like, hey, that's that's great. This is going to be huge. And then it sort of followed the market. And then as discussions of various stimulus have happened, um, which means increased debt uh, that's being taken on by the U.S. government, 
you know, these value, these prices have, have fallen and fallen and fallen to where they are currently um, at the low that we haven't seen since uh, the beginning of 2020. Right. So uh, currently you have in the one day you've got the 10 year lower than the 20, lower than the 60. These are all in line, which makes me think that this trend is going to continue. So let's play with time a little bit and take this down to the one hour to see if there's anything different. In the one hour, you have the same scenario. Uh, the 60 is higher than the 20, is higher than the 10, so they're all in line to head lower. Let's look at the 30 minute. At the 30 minute, you have another confirmation of uh, lower, lower trending uh, values. And let's take it to the 15. The 15, we finally see a little bit of congestion uh, maybe the markets are tight in these uh, from the, more of the tick data um, and seeing that, you know, um, at this level, really at this level, you still have all three in line. If you look in the upper left hand corner, the 10 day is lower than the, tw I'm sorry, the 10 period is lower than the 20 and that's lower than the 60. So um, it's been a while since we've seen all uh, all time periods actually point lower um that's very impressive <laughs> normally it's a little bit more of a mix-up and you know a day or two ago there may have been some mix-up or even different hours but as the case may be just looking at it right now and where it closed on friday the 12th everything is in line for prices to go lower um so let's go ahead and switch this back to the one day data and then we're going to take a look at uh, the MACD uh, moving average convergence divergence indicator. We'll also play with time there too, just to uh, to get a better sense, better understanding. And you know, when you're looking at this, when you have trending markets, I find this this tool or this um, indicator to be of less value um, because it's these crosses don't mean a whole lot to me. That's why in most of my videos I mention wanting to see not only across in the overbought or oversold area, but I want to see the MACD uh, and the signal line go below the zero line. And this is why if you look at this long term trend, we had a cross back in August and we went below the zero line into the oversold category and every pullback, every cross of the MACD has still kept us below the zero line. It's kept us in the oversold, which means that we could continue going lower. Let's take a look at a shorter time frame like the one hour. So with the one hour, um, wow, we're getting we're getting a bit more. So saw a little bit of an uptick here, uh, but then it's actually this cross here that crossed below the zero line. That actually would have been a great sell. You uh, and just so you know as well. Um, T-bond futures are priced in 30 seconds. So right now it's pricing 155 and 17 30 seconds. <laughs> um, most people, unless you're used to seeing um, the fractions that are used in like corn futures and uh, treasury futures, and there's some others as well. Most of the ags are in fractions on uh, other interest rate products. Um, that might throw you off, but these bonds are priced in 30 seconds. So um, in reality, like 18, 30 seconds is um, 56 and a quarter cents. So you just have to do the math. But um, seeing this at the one hour level, you had a cross above the zero line and that fell below the zero line back, uh, uh, let's see, back on the 11th of March. And so it was a few days ago and it really did fall on off to the point where it is now and it almost looks like it's about to cross but again i'm not uh, really a believer that this is about to come on up just yet so let's look at the 30. so at the 30 day we do see a cross uh in the you know we see a crossover happening between the macd and the signal line below uh so below the zero line so we're in the oversold category again i wouldn't trust uh using this indicator until it crosses uh, crosses the zero line here. So you've got this big zero line till it crosses there. I wouldn't believe it. And for a better description of the of the MACD 
um, or, or how to use this indicator or any of the indicators for that matter, I made a, a technical, like a how to trade stock using technical analysis video. Um, so just find that video. It was live streamed. It's a great video. It's about 40 minutes and it'll walk through all of the indicators that I talk about here on the show. So I um, just want to make sure you guys understand um, why some of this uh, matters and what it is. Let's drop it down one more time to the 15 minute and see if we get any better indication. So here, the 15 minute, we're seeing it get closer, closer to the zero line, but still hasn't crossed. Without that cross, I'm really not as interested. And look at this cross that happened back in uh, March, I'm sorry, back uh, a few days ago on Thursday, uh, March 21st. So we see that not only did we have a cross in the overbought uh, area, but it crossed the zero line. If you gotten short there and just held out, you'd still be short. You'd still be short if you're using this indicator. So that's significant. That's, uh, that's good to know and definitely, uh, definitely worth noting. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at, uh, let me get rid of the MACD. We're going to pull this back to the daily and you know, with an ongoing uh, trend, like an ongoing downward trend, especially one that is uh, nearly, oh, let's pull this out. We can see how much, uh, how far have we actually gone since this last uptrend. So let's go ahead and use a little bit of Fibonacci analysis. Um, it's actually not a bad time to use it. We're gonna start from, we'll even take this low back here. And we're gonna go all the way to the tippy top high. We're just gonna drag that over. And I'm gonna go here. Great. So at this point, we have crossed the 61.8% uh, level. Very interesting. Um, we also are, I mean, we're pretty far from the 78.6, uh, um, but we have not gotten to the previous low, which would be 100%. So um, this is actually really a lot more valuable as I look at it now. Um, I'm seeing the support that happened um, around the 38.2%. And even though we had two days back here in March of 2020 that bounced uh, below that, um, you can see it really was a bounce. And then it came over here to June the 4th. And we saw another rebound off of that level. Um, it played a, a role back in November and then in December, and, well, I guess that's January, it fell on through. And then you see that 38.2% level on the retracement become resistance, right? And we've fallen, we quickly fell through the 50% retracement and we've fallen through the 61.8%. Um, what's really interesting as well right now, I'm going to get rid of this. Um, I don't see any other key levels being tapped on. I mean, I guess this 78.6% retracement, retracement level played a role. It, it, you can see how it's um, active around here back in January of 19 uh, as a possible resistance, um, but it didn't play a big role uh, anywhere else. We do see the 61.8% level having been uh, roughly the support back in September of 19. Um, but that's really about it. Cause these, I'm not going to make any of these data points that we saw in, you know, uh, November and December, um, matter for that 61.8. So I just want to get a sense of what matters and what, how this stock is reacting around different levels. But what is really interesting, I think is this uh, this line that already exists, it's that red line coming across. I'm just gonna make it a little bit more, uh, let's see, visible. So this, this line here, this area is very interesting. So we're sitting right now at an area that has been both support and resistance. It was support um, here in December of 19, support in early November of 19, but resistance prior to that. 
We saw some resistance in June of 19. We saw some resistance around this level back in August of 17 and in you know April of 17. And I'm betting we can even pull it on back to see um, has this area. That really is it. That really is about it. We don't have to extrapolate too much more, but um, notice how when you add more data to it just changes the overall view. And that's the beauty of, ha of being able to go back in the history and say, hey, does this level matter? Has it mattered before? Um, because there might be some other interest um, at that level. Sometimes different countries will say, hey, we are interested in buying uh, treasury bonds at this price. And they just have a program where wherever, whenever that price is hit, they're buying or they're selling or, you know, and hedge funds and other pensions uh, are, are well known for doing that sort of analysis. So it's, it's good to just scroll out and see if you can find any support or resistance that matters. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. Um, in general, if I were to take the general overview, I certainly expect uh, treasury bonds to go lower, these futures to go lower. Uh, those moving averages were fairly uh, consistent and convincing. Um, I think too, the fact that it went through the 61.8% level in Fibonacci, uh, I would wait. I'm not going to just short it right now, but I would wait to see because if we do go lower, I think we might have a good shot of, of, of retracing all the way down to the 71, um, the 78.2% level. Um, but that's it for today's analysis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, if you also trade uh, treasury bond futures, if this is an area that you watch, uh, let me know in the comments. I'm really curious how many folks out there are getting involved in this one. Um, and there's so many great trades you could put on. You know, I know guys that have traded their whole career. They've done the 510, um, the spread on the five year and the 10 year. The guys that do spreads on the 10 year and the 20 and the 20 and the 30. So um, lots of trades out there uh, that look at these interest rates. And certainly if you're trading the uh, global macro, if you're like a global macro hedge fund guy, you definitely are watching these rates um, just to get a sense of what's going on uh, with the overall economy and how that's going to affect your portfolio and how it affects other countries too. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, I don't know what you're waiting on. Definitely hit the subscribe button so that you can watch all the other videos that I make out there. Thank you for joining and uh, happy trading.